Good morning, everybody. Today we're going to be talking about the anatomy of specific and size. Um, we're just going to be talking about the um, maxillary centrals lateral and mandibular centrals and laterals as well. Um, and the permanent position. We're not going to discuss anything about yeah. today. It's all covered about the permanent dentition. Okay. So let's start off today with a question that we left off last week. Type of scooter is non medical. You got it. erosion because abrasion and attrition is caused by either excessive occlusion, grinding, or an outside object like a brush or um, a toothpick. So erosion is the loss of tooth structure from non-mechanical means and can result from acidic liquids or acidic foods, remember. Uh, especially people who have bulimia, anorexia, who throw up a lot, they, they kind of lose the tooth structure that way from the acids. Okay? All right. So today, to start off with the anatomy of the incisors, the first thing that you need to know is something called the cingulum. Cingulum is, for one, singular is plural. Okay, so here the singula is a lingual cervical ridge. It's also known as lingual cervical ridge, but most commonly we refer to it as a cingulum. It's the lingual lobe of an anterior tooth. So it's going to be in the lingual part of the tooth, okay, and it's like a lobe, like a little curvature on the back, and it's kind of bulky. It bulges up, you can see over here. Here the teeth, you can see that you can see them from the incisal edge looking downwards, okay? And over here, you can see it, it's on the lingual surface on the back. Even if you see the tooth on the side, you can see this bulkiness right over here. That's called a cingulum, okay? It makes up the bulk of the cervical third of the lingual surface. Okay. So over here, I put a little picture showing you the the division of the crown of the tooth, any tooth in the oral cavity, permanent or primary, anterior, posterior, whatever it is, it's divided into three. Cervical third, middle third, and incisal third. Okay, by incisal third, you all know that, okay, this is the, the quarter part that is closest to the incisal, incisal edge, right over here. So that's the incisal third, okay? And the middle third is right in the middle, sandwiched between the incisal and the cervical. The cervical third is the third <clears throat> that's closest to the root and the gingiva. Okay, so the cingulum is going to be in the cervical third. That's where it's confined to, okay? So you guys just need to know that, I mean, it's pretty simple. Just so later on in the future when we talk about more anatomical structures of the tooth, you would know, if I say middle third, cervical third, you would know what I'm talking about. Okay. All right, so now that we defined what a cingulum is, we know that it's the bulk of in the lingual surface of the tooth, it's in the cervical third. Now we need to know two things about the cingulum. It either can be centered or off-centered. Off-centered meaning it's like it's not it's not in the center. It's either a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, correct? So as you can see in the picture over here, this cingulum, it's obvious that it's centered. It's right in the middle. Over here, it's off-centered. It's kind of towards the distal part, right? Okay. So the centered cingulum is located in the center of the cervical third of the lingual service. Now, I want you guys to know which teeth, which anterior teeth, have centered cingulums and which have off-centered cingulums. This is important because you, every tooth is, is unique. And later on in the future, if you would like to differentiate between um, incisors and let's say a tooth is missing, missing or something and, and you're not sure if it's a central, central or a lateral incisors, this would be the best way to know the difference, okay? So for centered cingulums, for cingulums located in the center, the teeth that have it are maxillary lateral incisors, for your upper laterals, 
maxillary canines. Canines also have cingulates. It's not cingulates are not only confined to um, incisors; they're also to, confined to canines. But that's about it. Those are the only anterior, only the anterior teeth have cingulates. So the centered cingulates, maxillary lateral incisors, maxillary canines, and mandibular central incisors. So they're kind of like if you think about it, it's easier for you to remember that they kind of complement each other. So since the maxillary central incisors are not do not have a centered cingulum, the mandibular central incisors do. So again, the centered cingulum for the centered cingulum is for the maxillary laterals, maxillary canines, mandibular central incisors. Off-centered cingulum is located off-center. Usually it's to the distal in the cervical, cervical third of the lingual surface. So when the cingulum is off-centered, it's usually to the distal. It's confined to the maxillary central incisors, and then we flip mandibular lateral incisors and mandibular canines because the mandibular centrals have centered cingulum. Okay. So it, it's pretty easy to remember, I believe. All right. So now we're done with the cingulum. We learned what a cingulum is, where it's located on the tooth, and which teeth have a centered cingulum and an off-centered cingulum. And if it's off-centered, where is it off-centered? Great. We, we know everything we need to know about the cingulum for now. Now, we move on to something called incisal line angles. From the pictures right now, just in a general look, general overview of the incisal line angles, you might have guessed it right. The incisal line angles is where the incisal edge is, and it it kind of curves into a uh, an edge, and and then it goes all the way up and confines to an, to a line. So we're going to be talking about these angles over here: the distal incisal angle, the mesial incisal angle. Remember those? Okay. So we're going to, as a general rule here, okay. The distal incisal angle of most anterior teeth, speaking of incisors only, oh, and including canines, I, I apologize, is more rounded compared to the mesial incisal angle, which is more square. Okay, so for you to remember this general rule easier, you can connect it to the cingulum. When we said that the cingulum is off center to the distal, so the distal incisal angle is more rounded compared to the mesial incisal angle, which is a little bit more square. As you can see here in the picture, it's obvious. This is the distal side, and this is the mesial side. You see, you see how it, over here it's more square, and the mesial line angle is basically straight, while in the distal it's more rounded, and then you got this like little bulk going on on the distal side. Okay? Do you remember that? Distal is rounded like the letter D. Mesial is straight like the letter, letter M. That's a little bit of a hint for you guys to remember and memorize easier. We have one exception to this general rule. So we, we're talking about this general rule confines to all the anterior teeth, including canines, okay, except one tooth, which is the mandibul mandibular central incisors. The mandibular central incisors, this is a picture of mandibular central, you can see that both edges are square. So it's the only anterior tooth in which the distal incisal angle is as sharp and distinct as the mesial incisal angle. That's for the mandibular central incisors. All other incisors and all other canines, the general rule applies to them. The mesial incisal angle is sharp, the distal incisal angle is rounded. When it comes to the mandibular centrals, they're both sharp. That's a, that's a good way to distinguish, um, let's say, a mandibular central from a mandibular lateral, right? From the angles. You can distinguish it from there. Okay. Um, so anterior teeth are very important aesthetically. Of course, if, you, if, if a person doesn't have any anterior teeth, he would look kind of odd. And it plays an important role in the formation of many speech sounds. So if you can just go over these three sounds right here, try it and see how, 
how your anterior teeth are involved in producing this sound, v. With the v sound, your lower lip kind of tucks in to the maxillary anteriors. V, uh, the same thing, v. Your tongue is stuck between the maxillary and mandibular anteriors. So imagine if, if those are missing. I don't believe that you would be able to produce any of these sounds. Okay, so that, that's why the anterior teeth play an important role. Besides, you know, cutting the food in, and because that's where the digestion process starts, it, it's also important to produce speech sound, and it's important aesthetically, it, because it forms the shape of your lips as well. You know, it's, your lips kind of support, are supported by the teeth underlying it. Okay, and another thing about the anterior teeth, when viewed from the sagittal plane, the axial inclination of anterior teeth inclines spatially. What does that mean? I'm pretty sure you guys went over the planes in general anatomy, but I put a, a small reminder for you guys over here. The sagittal plane is cutting the, um, the section into half and dividing it into left and right uh, sections. Just remember that with the sagittal plane, it's like it's like the midline for your entire body. and and then you have here the coronal plane, it cuts it into front and back, and then you have the transverse plane up and, and bottom. Okay, so here is a section of a sagittal plane of the teeth, and they said that the axial inclination, axial inclination, this is the, axial comes from axis, okay, and this is the long axis of the tooth, like the shape of the tooth, how it is. So axial inclination of the anterior teeth inclines facially. So remember the surfaces of the teeth. So when we say it inclines facially, it goes outwards a little bit more, correct? If I said it was inclining lingually, then it would be going towards the inside more. But over here, you can see that it's inclining facially for both mandibular and maxillary teeth, OK? I just need you guys to know that piece of information. All righty. See what's next. I think I skipped one. Yes. Okay. Outlines of tooth crowns. Now, every tooth from each uh, from each surface, whether it's facial, lingual, proximal, which is mesial or distal, um, it has a certain kind of shape. Okay. And usually these shapes are confined to geometric outlines, which are three shapes: triangle, trapezoid and rhomboid. Okay, so we'll start off with the triangle shape. The triangle shape, as you can see here, it's in figure A. It's confined to the six anterior teeth, maxillary and mandibular, mesial and distal aspect. So any anterior tooth, central, lateral, or canine, mandibular or maxillary, if you look at it from the proximal view, which is mesial or distal, you're going to see that the tooth has a general triangular outline, like over here in the picture, okay? Now, trapezoid. Trapezoid is, is kind of like a square, but one, one side is longer and the other side is shorter, okay? That's a trapezoid. Tra with, a, with a trapezoid shape, you have, um, like, we can, we can split it into two types the type where the longest and even side is towards the occlusal or incisal surface, and the other one is the, the shortest and even side is towards the occlusal surface, okay? But now we'll start off with the longest one towards the incisal edge. Uh, as you can see in, in figures B, C, and D, all anterior teeth, maxillary and mandibular, from the labial and lingual sides, they're trapezoid. Now remember, anterior teeth from the mesial and distal are triangular. From the labial and lingual aspect, they are trapezoid. As well as all posterior teeth, buccal and lingual aspects. Okay, so this is kind of easy to remember. You can remember that all the teeth, whether anterior or posterior, from the labial and lingual aspect, or buccal and lingual aspect, which, whichever it is, it's going to be trapezoid. And the longest and even side is going to be towards the occlusal or incisal edge. Good? Okay. Now, with the shortest and even side towards the occlusal surface, 
This is confined to all maxillary teeth, mesial and distal aspect. As in figure E, right here. This is how it's going to be. Of course, with the exception of anterior teeth. So I believe I believe that I missed that. All posterior teeth, because all anterior teeth from the mesial and distal are triangular. Okay. And all the teeth from the labial and lingual aspect are trapezoid, longest and even side towards the incisal edge, while all the maxillary teeth from the mesial and distal aspect are trapezoid with the shortest and even side towards the occlusal surface. Now, for the last one, rhomboid. Rhomboid is, is, is kind of like a square or rectangular, but it's not really 90 degree angles. They are, as you can see here, in figure F. So th this shape is confined to all mandibular posterior teeth, mesial and distal aspect. Okay, so for maxillary teeth, mesial and distal aspect, trapezoid, but for mandibular posterior teeth, it's rhomboid. Okay, now th th this is important to know just in case, you know, you're studying for the boards, these kind of questions might come and pop up. So it's better for, I figured it's better for you guys to know this now, since you're early in the foundation of dental anatomy, so that it just sticks in your memory later on in the future. It, it will help, definitely. Okay. All right, now we're going to talk about the pulp chambers in the teeth, in the anterior teeth. Okay, so rem you guys remember what a pulp chamber is? Just in case you forgot, I put a picture up for you, here for you. Pulp chamber is found in the center of the tooth between the crown and the tooth root canal. Remember the root canal? Yep, right here. That, that's where it's confined, okay? Um, so here, in this picture, we have cross-sections of all the anterior teeth. This is seeing it from the top to the bottom, okay? We cut it cross-section just to see the how the canal is shaped, okay? So here, the pulp chamber of the maxillary central incisor is wider mesiodistally than labiolingually. Okay, so I just want you to know that when it comes to the pulp chamber, all anterior teeth are the same except for the maxillary central incisor. As you can see here, it's shaped totally the opposite than all the other ones. All the other ones, they're wider, Facial-lingually than mesiodistally, but with the maxillary central, it's it's wider mesiodistally. Okay, just remember that. And the pulp cavity conforms the general shape of the outer surface of the tooth. Exactly. So the shape of the tooth on the outside is confined by the pulp cavity on the inside. Remember how I told you that the tooth follows the shape of the pulp horns. If they're high, the cusps are going to get higher. It's the same thing with the root canal, okay. The pulp cavity is widest at the cervical level, and the pulp chamber is centered within the dentin of the root, okay. So the pulp chamber over here is going to be in the middle of the dentin, is centered, so it's equal amounts of dentin almost everywhere. And the pulp cavity is widest at the cervical level. This is the cervical level. Remember, we talked about the thirds of the tooth, incisal third, middle third, and cervical third. So at the cervical third, it's going to be the widest. Okay? Not too bad, right? So only one exception with the pulp chambers. All right, now we're going to talk about the pulp canal. The pulp canal is the passage of the root of a tooth through which its nerves and blood vessels enter the pulp cavity. Remember, pulp chamber and, you know, pulp canal or root canal. They're both the same. Okay. So in this picture, we're talking about the mandibular central and mandibular lateral. It's kind of a comparison over here, and uh, it's, a, it's a pretty common uh, comparison. So when you compare the mandibular canals, the centrals and the laterals, okay, you notice that the mandibular lateral incisor's root is larger in all dimensions, right here. This is the lateral and this is the central. Now, I, I don't know if you can, if it's really obvious, but in general, as a general rule, the mandibular central incisor is 
the tiniest tooth in the mandible. Get it? So you start off with the mandibular central incisors at the smallest tooth compared to the tooth next to it, which is the mandibular lateral. It's bigger in, si in, in all kinds of sizes, like the crown, the root, the cham bulb chamber, everything. It's bigger. And then it just goes wider and wider and wider. Now, with the maxillary, remember, it's, it's the opposite. The maxillary centrals are large, while the mandibular, where the maxillary laterals are smaller. So just, just kind of remember that. It'll help you, it'll help you remember all these fine detailed information. So now that we established that the mandibular lateral is bigger than the mandibular central, we, it's fair to say that the root is larger in all dimensions. The pulp canal of a mandibular lateral incisor is an elliptical shape, wider in the mesiodistal direction in the pulp chamber. So it's wider in the pulp chamber, mesiodistal direction, correct. You can see it in the picture. And it's wider facial-lingually in the midroot area. So this is the midroot area, like in the middle of the root. You can see that the that the chamber in the canal um, is wider than the central incisor. Okay, so th this is kind of important to know when you're doing a root canal. You need to know all the anatomy of the pulp chambers and root canals so that when you're doing your axis cavity, the opening, you know where where to go. You know the you already know the anatomy of the tooth, so. Instead of going in blind and saying, all right, let me go see where it is, you already know where to drill, where to put your burr, okay? All righty. Let's see what the next slide is about. I skipped it again. Okay. All right. This is another one. This is a nice one. Crown rotation. From its name, crown rotation. Not every crown is going to be perfectly aligned with the root in like a straight axis. Some some of the crowns are going to be a little bit rotated. Now, I think you've already noticed that we've seen a crown rotation when we were talking about the cingulum, when it was centered and off-centered. When it was off-centered, it was off-centered to the distal, and the crown kind of looked funky, like it was rotated. It wasn't like parallel and straight and like a twin cut. So in this case, we're going to be comparing between mandibular centrals and mandibular laterals. Um, it's just the most common teeth that can be difficult to distinguish between. And this is a great way to know how. So the mandibular lateral incisor crown tips slightly to the distal relative to the root. Remember, because its cingulum is offset off-centered to the distal. So automatically, if there's any cingulum of any tooth that is off-centered, it's automatically going to have a rotated crown. Or you're going to have the, 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 or you're going to have one side that's longer than the other. Like, there's going to be some kind of discrepancy. The lateral is larger overall. We discussed that. The lateral is not as bilaterally symmetrical as the central incisor. Now remember, we said the incisal line angle of the central incisors, the mesial incisal and distal incisal, are as sharp as each other. But when it comes to the lateral, the mesial incisal angle is sharp, while the distal incisal angle is more round, like the letter D, remember? So obviously, it's not going to be as symmetrical as the central incisor. And you have an offset cingulum, and you have a rotated crown. So it has all these, like, all these factors that go into it. So we discussed this. The cingulum of the lateral is slightly distal to the center. It's slightly distal to the center. OK. Uh, on the lateral incisor, the mesial marginal ridge is longer than the distal marginal ridge, while on centrals, they are the same length. OK, so a mesial marginal ridge and a distal, this is a marginal ridge right here. You can see it. OK, let me go over here. These are the laterals. So this is the mesial marginal ridge. It's longer than the distal mar marginal ridge. So several reasons go into this. You can see like it's it's a sharp angle over here. The inside of the angle this is more round. You can see that the crown is already rotated. The cingulum is offset to the distal. So it's kind of like squishing onto the distal side. So the marginal ridge is 
basic this is the marginal ridge okay it's basically going to be shorter than the mesial one okay so just remember the central mandibular centrals are perfect nothing is wrong with them straight no complications while everything else is in the core laterals okay that's an easy way of remembering it okay Lateral incisors have the distal proximal contacts more apical than the mesial contacts. The centrals are at the same level. Okay, that's another thing we're going to discuss in future lectures, the, um, the contacts between the teeth, where they're located, between each two teeth, where they're located. In this case, the centrals contact with each other and with the laterals next to them. Just imagine it, or just look at a mirror and look at your teeth. The, the, the centrals, they contact with each other in the same level, right? Because basically that tooth is straight, no angulations, all the same level, the marginal ridges are the same length, so yeah, they're gonna contact in the same area. And then they contact with the mesial aspect of the mandibular laterals in the same level as well, because the mandibular laterals have longer mesial marginal ridges, and it's about the same height as the centrals. But when you go a little bit further and you go to the distal part of the lateral incisors, it's going to be a little bit more apical. Apical means going down. Remember, apical foramen means at the bottom. Okay, so a little bit more apical means a little bit lower than where the central's mesial contacts are, are going to contact with the uh, lateral's mesial contacts. Get it? Okay, let's rephrase that again. I think I messed up a little bit. <laughs> okay, so the central, mandibular centrals, they contact mesially and distally. They contact at the same level, correct? We got that right. The lateral incisors on the mesial part, they contact perfectly at the same level. But on the distal part, they contact a little bit more apically than its mesial part. Get it? Because of the rotation, because the distal marginal ridge is a little bit shorter, and yada, yada, yada. Everything's connected. Every piece of information is connected. And uh, I assure you, if you know one piece of information, you're going to you're gonna know the rest. It's just going to stick in your head. Okay. Lateral incisors have the distal incisor angles more rounded. Yes. Like the letter D that the mesial incisor angles. On centrals, the angles are the same on both sides. Yep, we went over that. Both mandibular central and lateral have a lingual cervical line that is positioned more apically than the facial cervical line. Okay. So what is a lingual cervical line and what is a facial cervical line? So remember the cervical third? Okay, so it's going to be right about here. That's the cervical third. Okay. So this is going to be the facial, and this is going to be the lingual. So the cervical line, this is the cervical line. You see how the crown contacts with the root, and there's a line right between them to distinguish it? That's a cervical line. Okay. And in this case, this is, uh, what did I put it? This is the facial or the labial cervical line, and this is the lingual. So what they mean is that both the central and the laterals have a lingual cervical line, okay, lingual, over here at the back, that's positioned more apically, more below than the facial cervical line, which is true in the picture. You can see it. It's distinguished. Like The facial cervical line is a little bit higher, and the lingual cervical line over here is a little bit lower. Even you can play with your teeth. Like when you go and, and you touch and you pass your tongue on the lingual surface of, of your mandibular centrals and laterals, you can see that it like it's relatively low. And then when you try and it, when you try it in the labial or the facial aspect, you can see that it's a little bit higher. You can check it in, in the mirror and see. But that's an interesting fact to know as well. Okay? So basically this was a great comparison between the centrals and the laterals and it's also great because it keeps repeating the information that we, we've already discussed earlier and it kind of um 
it, it, it kind of helps you memorize all these little details. Which, there's nothing complicated. We've had general rules, a couple of exceptions, and this is a great way to remember uh, different uh, terms. I know that there are terms that you're not familiar with, but that's okay. You know, repetition and just keep reading it. If you're not sure about anything, uh, you can just like look it up. But I think this is the best way to to deliver these kind of information. Okay, let's see what we have next. Okay, so now we move on to general characteristics. We're still talking about mandibular anterior teeth. So three characteristics common to all mandibular anterior teeth. So we're talking about uh, centrals, laterals, and canine. Indistinct singular with smooth lingual anatomy without pits and grooves. Okay, indistinct singular. We talked. We only talked about centered and off-centered. Now, what's distinct and indistinct? So, common sense. It's not really that protruded. It's not out there, and it's not that bulky when compared to the maxillary anterior teeth. You can see it right away. With the mandibular anterior teeth, you kind of because they're so tiny that it's going to be indistinct. It's going to be a, like a little bit of a bump, more than more than the maxillary teeth. Okay, so it's going to be smooth, no pits and grooves. So it's not going to be pitted and rigid and stuff like that. No cracks, no nothing. Nothing's going through it. It's just a smooth, tiny little surface. Incisal edges lingual to the root axis line. Okay, so remember how I told you that the axis of the anterior teeth, both mandibular and maxillary, on the sagittal plane are inclined facially. Now, when we look at it at the smaller picture, just the uh, mandibular anterior teeth, you can see that, okay, so this is the root, right? And this is the crown, and you can see this is the incisal edge, and it's kind of tipping towards the lingual side. So that's what they mean by lingual to the root axis line. This is the root axis line. Okay, you draw a straight line from the root all the way to the top, and then you can see that part of the crown is lingual to that root axis line. Okay? Continuous convexity incides so apically on the facial surface. So this is the facial surface. This is convexity is like um uh, I'm sure you know what convexity is, but convexity is like, instead of it caving in, it's caving out like this. Um, and it's continuous. Like you don't have to like, when you're drawing a tooth, you don't draw the root and then you say, oh, okay, I need to do a bulk here. No, it's like kind of continuous and, and, and harmonious together. And it's on the facial surface for all mandibular anterior teeth. Specific information pertaining to mandibular central incisors. Now remember, central incisors are the perfect teeth, the small teeth, the edges are perfect, the line angles are perfect, marginal ridges, and so on. One thing you need to know about these teeth is that they occlude with one other tooth. So when you bite down, all your teeth touch each other. And and mainly the, when when a tooth from when a mandibular tooth touches or occludes with a maxillary tooth, it's occluding with two teeth because you have the mesial incisal, distal incisal angle contacting with different teeth. But when it comes to the mandibular centrals, because they're so tiny and the maxillary centrals are so huge, so it's kind of confined to just the maxillary central incisors and both its incisal edges contact with the maxillary central incisor. So they only occlude with one tooth. Remember, the canines, maxillary, and mandibular are the only teeth with labial ridges. Labial ridges, okay. So over here, we don't, in, we have not discussed labial ridges at all in mandibular centrals or laterals because it's only confined to canines, maxillary and mandibular. So it's going to be like a ridge, like um, I should have put in a picture, but that's okay. Next lecture is going to be just canines. I'll elaborate a little bit more about that. So it's it's going to be like a ridge in the middle of the crown on the labial part, on the facial part of the tooth, on the canine. That's a little bit protruded, you can see, as the the um, the anatomy of a canine's crown 
is that it has that protrusion in the middle, which is the labial ridge, and then it kind of dips on both sides, and it gives you that um, that angle, and then it gives you that point at the incisal edge of the cannon. Don't worry about that. Just remember that labial ridges, if you hear a labial ridge, just remember canine because it, it only exists on canines. Okay. Oh, all right. So this is all we're going to be discussing today about insiders. I mean, there's plenty of information, and it's all the important information that you'll ever need to know. Okay, so just as a little... Um, just for a little fun, I put a quick question of the scenario and see, like, what happens. So the question is, a patient gives a history of car accident where he lost two of his lower front teeth, okay? He also states that he had braces to fill in the gaps. Which of the following criteria would be the most reliable to decide if the remaining teeth are central or lateral incisors? This is a great case, remember? How I said, like, okay, we're differentiating between this and that, so that just in case, you know, you need to differentiate between central and laterals. Because, again, if you wanted to do a root canal, if you wanted to do, let's say, you wanted to rebuild the tooth because it, it was chipped or something, you want to go by the anatomy. Okay, so let's see what do we have for options. Difference in root length, difference in ratio of crown or root length, degree of slope of the incisal edge when viewed facially, Difference in rotation of the crown to the root. So just think about it, and I'll see you guys next week.